to close down the 72 miles of track between Settle and Carlisle in the Lake District. Since then, a huge public protest has gathered force. The R now stands accused of sabotage for not maintaining not only its most beautiful asset, but also one which has become increasingly profitable. Well, next week, the arguments from both sides will be aired at a public inquiry. This week, Laurie Mayer has been taking the scenic route. British Rail has called the Settle to Carlisle the most spectacular main line in England. But for over 20 years, ever since Dr. Beeching tried to axe it, BR has been bent on closure. The 72-mile track across the Pennines at 1,000 feet was superbly engineered by the Victorians. 325 bridges, 21 viaducts and 14 tunnels set amid stunning scenic beauty. But BR say the line is too expensive to repair and simply not needed. They insist that the mainline routes to Scotland running London, Manchester, Glasgow on the west coast and London, York, Edinburgh on the east can cope without another route between the two. So five years ago, BR began what opponents call its closure by stealth programme, a calculated rundown of services which they claim is tantamount to sabotage. As the rails rusted, the line took on an air of dereliction. Maintenance is now minimal and major repairs neglected. It's all been left to rot, say objectors, to help BR prove its case for closure. Inner city services from Nottingham to Glasgow were diverted to the west coast. Then freight was rerouted and passenger trains were cut to just four a day. Objectors say the new timetables were made deliberately unattractive. What they do to achieve a policy aim is basically to present the worst possible scenario. Um, British Rail will tell you that they have not invested in, in an area of their business that they don't want to develop, and that's a sound business decision. On the other hand, it prejudges the whole issue of closure. The majestic Ribblehead Viaduct has become a cornerstone of BR's case for closure. They've said in the past that it could cost up to £6 million to repair the crumbling quarter mile of ageing limestone. The sad decay of the magnificent Ribblehead Viaduct, it's a listed monument, is a prime example of what one civil engineer has called BR's wanton neglect. Five years ago, the top of the viaduct should have been re-waterproofed. Today, the work's still not been done. And yet this is in an area where the average rainfall is eight feet a year. Nevertheless, the Carlisle to Settle line made a £1 million profit last year due largely to summertime steam excursions and weekend specials to the Dales. Engines like the Flying Scotsman have helped it become the most profitable and popular provincial line in the country. Even BR admit it has potential. There is a degree of additional potential, yes, there is. But uh, one mustn't... Uh become too complacent and think you can, in fact, balance the book. So we're faced, due to what I said earlier, this extraordinary um, deterioration in the structure, the climatic conditions, that's an enormous bill to overcome. This protest special contains just a fraction of the 22,265 people who've objected to closure. I know, from my experience of the past, I know even today this route is used for diversions from the main lines the east and the west, and it's absolutely essential we keep it open. The proof is that over the three-day Easter break, BR is diverting no fewer than 66 trains onto the Settle to Carlisle because of repair work on the West Coast main line. Perhaps BR needs the line as much as anyone else. That would be the best guarantee that Britain's most beautiful railway survives after all.